everyone, and welcome back for your 15-minute daily inspiration. I'm so glad to see you. I'm Pastor Carey, pastor of Emerging Generations here at The Incredible New Birth, pastored by Dr. Jamal H. Bryant, and we are just so happy that you are here. Listen, I pray that you have had a wonderful day. I pray that you woke up healthy and happy, that you are um, prosperous and that you are on your way, that you are focused to do everything that the Lord has called you to do in this life starting today. So listen, I am so glad that you are here. If you've not had an opportunity to share this, I'm asking that you would do so right now. It gives us a chance to evangelize right where we are every time we share, just one person we share it with. I believe that we help others to grow and that we've advanced the mission and the agenda of the kingdom. So listen, tell me, hey, give me some hearts. Listen, say, hey, Pastor Carrie, I'm so glad that you are here. You know that I am always so thrilled to talk to you about what the Lord shares with me in our 15-minute inspiration. You'll be amazed at how 15 minutes can change the course of your life, how 15 minutes can take you down a new path for the better. And so we are so honored to be able to do this. Today, I want to jump right in. Our topic for today is under construction, the process of becoming. We have, for the last couple of months, have been stuck with ourselves. And if you've not spent any time with yourself, I wonder how you doing. If you're a person like me who spends a great deal of time by myself, I was comfortable with being alone, but it also caused me to have to look myself in the mirror. I couldn't uh, look at anybody else. I couldn't really focus on anybody else. I was alone with myself. And what we are faced with during this quarantine time, during this time that we have been alone, is the truth of what we see in ourselves. Listen, there are some beautiful things that we might see about who we are, and there might be some things that we see about who we are that may make us feel uncomfortable. Listen, this year has been what I call beautiful chaos. I'm calling it beautiful because I'm speaking prophetically and hoping that that's what it will be. You know, it's been a really a balance for me of trying to balance my personal and my professional life. Listen, it's been a balance of, for many of us, not just me, but for you, you are balancing the same while you're living in the middle of a pandemic. We are often quick to give grace to others, but we give very little grace to ourselves. I have learned that I'm extremely hard on myself, but I give more grace to other people. I am a perfectionist, so if you are like me, you might be the same way. But I think in the middle of this, what it has caused me to remember during this time alone is that there are often times that we forget our own humanity. We forget that we are all in the process of becoming. We forget that we all have bad days, that we all have tough moments, that we might be out of balance, that we don't always have it together, that we feel the pressure of people, which in turn creates pressure that we places on ourselves. And so this week, the Lord reminded me that if he can give greater grace, so then should we. We should be able to do the same, not just to others, but we should also be able to give this grace to ourselves. Why? Because we are all in a continued process of becoming. Can I tell you, none of us have arrived. None of us have reached a place of perfection. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Listen, I don't care what it looks like on Facebook. I don't care what it looks like on Instagram. I don't even care what it looks like when we put filters on our pictures. None of us have arrived. We are all in the process of growing and we are all trying to figure out how to navigate this thing called life together, each in our own individual way. If the quarantine has taught me nothing else, if it has taught you nothing else, I pray that you have learned that just when you think you have it all together, just when you think life is doing what you want it to do, just when you think that you have everything under control, that God has a way of allowing life to be turned upside down, not to harm you, you, but I believe it's to recenter you. I believe it's to refocus you and to get you back to a place of growth. Listen, in light of all of this, I want us to just talk a little bit today about being under construction, about the process of becoming. You know, as I was praying about this, the Lord was beginning to give me an illustration of a builder and what that looks like when a building is under construction, what it looks like from start to finish. And what I found is that there are five five general stages of building construction that I think will be helpful for us today. Number one, it's the de 
design phase. Can I tell you, every successful build starts with an idea. It's during the design stage, a construction management company begins the work of transforming a concept into reality. I want you to remember from this, you've got to remember your design. Can I tell you that you are custom, that everything about you is unique, everything about you is, is specifically created to you? Ephesians 2 tells us where Paul says, listen, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, hear this, that we should walk in them. Listen, workmanship is the skill, it's the quality of a product based upon a design, the quality of the materials and the crafts that are included for their use. Also, it's the quality imparted in a thing, hear this, in the process of making. It is how you are built. It's the time. It's the attention that has gone into you for you to be what you are. God said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. This was in Genesis 1 and 6. What does that tell us? That listen, if God took the time to make us after his own image, that he carefully crafted us. The Bible says he knows the number of hairs on our head. And so we have to remember that this is a part of our process. Number two is the planning stage. With the design in hand, the project moves into the pre-construction phase. It is in this phase where the construction project coordinator confirms that the assembled team is working together smoothly. I want you to know that you've got to remember that you have already been equipped with everything that you need. Second Peter 1 and 3 says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this, hear this, by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Listen, 2 Timothy 3 and 17 says, so that the man of God may be complete, fully equipped for every good work. So as you are going through this planning phase, you've got to know that you have everything that you need. Number three is the construction execution phase. Listen, with the start of any project, you've got to understand that there is a construction execution phase. This is the construction stage the, where the building begins to happen. This is where quality and control and safety begins to take place. I want you to remember here that you are in a process. Listen, and that your journey is under God's control. Psalms 119 and 133 says, keep steady my steps according to your promise and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Psalms 37, 23 and 24 says the steps of a righteous man, y'all know this, are ordered by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong for the Lord upholds his hand. Listen, Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on until completion. Hear this, until the day of Christ Jesus. I love this passage because it tells us to be confident, be full of assurance, be strong in belief that God is invested in this thing until the end, that he will carry it on until its completion. Can I tell you that God is committed to your process of completion? Can I tell you that God is invested invested in you getting to the end. The Bible says that he broods over his word. He watches his own word to perform it, that it will do what it's supposed to do in your life. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Not a little bit, it says all of it. And do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Listen, Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Listen, number four is the cost and monitoring stage. Listen, in this phase, the performance and progress of the entire project is being monitored so that it is running on schedule. And not only is it running on schedule, but it is aligned with cost management. Can I tell you what does that mean in the process of you becoming? You've got to prepare to count the cost. And you got to know that in the middle of counting the cost, that God is always with you. Luke 14 and 28 says, for which 
each of you desiring to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. You've got to know that counting the cost comes along with the process. When you don't count the cost, you will begin, listen, to want to quit the process because you didn't realize what it was going to take for you to build. You didn't realize what it was going to take for you to become. And so you've got to understand, hallelujah, that there is a cost, glory to God, associated with you becoming you. There is a cost that you have to count up when you consider who you are in the earth, who God created you to be, and what you were called to do. But can I tell you, I want you to know that even while counting up the cost, because sometimes the cost feels too high, sometimes it seems too expensive, sometimes it seems like we can't even afford it. Can I tell you, you've got to know that God is always with you. Genesis 28 and 15 says, I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until, hallelujah, I have done what I have promised you. Jeremiah 1 and 12 says, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well for I am watching over my word to perform it. I just told you that. Isaiah 40 and 28 says, listen, this makes me happy. Have you not known? It says, have you not heard? It says the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. What that means, he don't ever get tired. So he is invested in your process. God is always with you. Psalms 121 and 8 says, the Lord will watch over your coming and your going. Hallelujah, both now and forevermore. Listen, number five is the completion phase. This is, the, this is where the building is finalized and it's handed over to the owner. Listen, this is when you have gotten to the place that you want to be at. We are all striving to get to the completion phase. This is why, listen, Paul told us, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Listen, you becoming who you are in this process. Listen, it's gonna take time. You don't arrive overnight. Listen, so when people want to talk about you, when people want to criticize you, when people want to make you feel like you have not arrived yet, because there are so many people that put on as if they're already there. If they are, bless them. But if you are like me, you are not perfect yet. If you are like me, you are still making mistakes. If you are like me, you know that greatness does not come in a vacuum. If you are like me, you know that every single day you have to make a decision to think a certain way. You've got to make a decision even in the face of discouragement to act a certain way. You've got to make a decision to take the high road even when other folks don't. You have to make a decision to go high as our first lady says when they go low. These are the things that you do but you give yourself grace in the middle of it. You are honest with where you are. Because listen, you can pretend in front of other people, but you can never pretend to yourself and ultimately you can never pretend to God. Even as we look at the construction of a building, we realize that it started with a vision. You started as a vision. God had you in mind. He knew who you should be born to. He knew what circumstances you should come from. He knew what gifts and talents you would have. He was mindful, hallelujah, of you and how he created you. And as you are in the process of becoming all that he now sees you, because can I tell you, I believe that the Lord sees us as our finished work. He is not seeing you in the midst of your sin. He is not seeing you in the midst of your mistakes, but he sees you as completed and whole. Our goal, our desire is get to get to the place in which the father sees us. And in order to do that, you've got to give yourself grace. You've got to give yourself an opportunity to process, to walk through what you are walking through. When folk got something to say, you just say, listen, I'm under construction. When they want to be critical, you say, listen, I'm under construction. Now that doesn't give us the right to remain in a space of being stagnant, but what it does help us to know is that every single day, hallelujah, that God gives us breath in our body, we have to be focused on growing. We have to be focused on progressing. And the same grace that we give to others as they are in their 
prayer process, we've got to learn to give to ourselves. So listen, I pray that as you have been one-on-one -on -one with yourself, that you have learned new things about yourself, even the hard stuff that we don't want to look at, because you got to look at the hard stuff in order to get to the place that you want to get to. I hope that today blessed you. I pray that you learn something new about being under construction, being in the process of becoming, and what that looks like. I pray that you have a fresh peace. I pray that you have a fresh anointing, a fresh heart for the Father as you move forward. Listen, we love you so much here at New Birth. I can't even tell you enough how much we love you. I can't tell you how grateful we are that you take the time to be with us for your 15 minutes. Listen, you could be doing anything right now, but you are here with us. And I believe that not only do we love it, but the Father loves it. Loves it and I believe that he will honor it. And so I speak blessings over your life, prosperity over your life, and only good things, good things that come from our Father. Listen, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant, your entire New Birth tribe, your entire New Birth community, we love you, we bless you, we honor you, we're praying for you always, and we're so glad that you were here. Listen, you can text to give right now because y'all know that I believe in sowing, and can I tell you, New Birth is great ground. I'm a personal witness to it. And if you say, listen, Pastor Carrie, we want to be a part of that community of faith where everybody knows that they are under construction and we are all pressing to become better. You can do that by joining right now at newbirth.org. Listen, I'm sending you virtual hugs. I'm sending you virtual love. And if nobody else is rooting for you, I promise you I am. If nobody else is praying for you, I promise you I am. And I believe that we will get there together. I love you. Have an incredible day. Thank <laughs> you.